Hey all here OS Reviews, a few days ago we did a review on the Samsung Galaxy A10e, which I think is one of the best value smartphones for around 50 bucks. But if you're on an even tighter budget, believe it or not, there's a smartphone that you can pick up without a contract using Amazon Prime for just $19, making this the lowest smartphone that's uh, shipped and fulfilled by Amazon directly. For the money, specs also aren't half bad. It's also kind of interesting because it's branded by TCL, which is more widely known for making pretty good valued TVs, but this is one of their first times putting their name on a smartphone. However, TCL have actually manufactured many of Alcatel's phones, so if you're familiar with that brand, you may have already experienced some of their handsets in the past. Now for the money, we are getting a 5.35 inch display, rounds up to about 5.4 inches, and it is a tall 2x by one aspect ratio or 18 by 9. It also has a quad core processor clocked at 1.1 gigahertz but unfortunately it's a pretty entry-level MediaTek chip. We also have Android 8.1 Oreo which is again decent at this price, 16 gigs of built-in storage and 2 gigabytes of RAM. Taking a closer look at the smartphone next there is some protective film that we can peel off on the rear to give access to the TCL logo. It is a unibody phone just like most devices these days which means that uh, the battery is not user removable and here's a sticker over the 8 megapixel camera with autofocus and LED flash. The design here is definitely not flashy but it does feel pretty solid for the price. It's constructed out of a polycarbonate surface and there is a slight texture on the back cover as well that makes the phone at least a little easier to grip and hold, doesn't attract too many fingerprints, and the back is completely flush. On the side here we have access to a volume rocker and a textured key that is the power button, which is nice to delineate. On the very bottom here, we have the loudspeaker, microphone, and also the micro USB for charging. And then there's nothing else on the other side except for the SIM slash micro SD expansion slot. You can expand the built-in memory up to 512 gigabytes. Now on the very top, there's also access to a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The battery inside, by the way, is rated at around 2,500 milliamp hours. So not the biggest in the world, but uh, with a slightly lower lower resolution display, uh, it does last you through a full day of use before you really need to worry about plugging it in. Now as a quick size comparison, here it is next to the aforementioned Galaxy A10e, which as you can see there actually has very similar overall body dimensions despite having a larger screen, it's just it has of course smaller bezels. Um, again the screen here is around 5.8 inches versus 5.4 inches, uh, but overall the kind of body here are about the same. And here is another device, the Samsung Galaxy S8, which you can see also has pretty similar overall dimensions. Before we dive deeper into the review, let's start with examining the screen a little further. I do have to point out that this might be one of the more disappointing parts of this handset. I think it already looks quite good for the price, to be honest. However, what I do have a problem with is track phones advertising being blatantly filled with lies. So if we go back to the Amazon page and uh, we go down here to the description and tap on the image here, we can see a pop-up that says, high def images, experience vivid colors, sharp clarity, and higher depth of realism with a 5.4 inch fully laminated HD IPS touchscreen display. So if we break that down, there are three parts. Fully laminated means that there's no gap between the glass and the LCD screen underneath. Pointing at the light, we can see clearly that there is an air gap between the top layer and the screen underneath, uh, which does cast a little bit of shadows if you are in a really glare uh, or sunlit environment, versus a truly uh, laminated display like they claim, there is no gap between the layers, just adding for a bit more of clarity, and it's a manufacturing process that's a little bit more expensive. So again, that first part of the advertisement stating laminated is actually false. The second part says HD. Now what HD means is 720p resolution, but this is in fact not a 720 p display. To be more specific, it's 480 by 854 for resolution, which again is actually quite average for a phone of its price. Uh, but again, it's track phone and Amazon's ad kind of being deceptive there because it's not HD, it's sitting at 480p and that's the highest resolution that you can use to watch say YouTube videos with. Third part of the statement says IPS. What IPS means is in-plane switching. It's a technology used by LCD screens to create wider viewing angles where if we tilt the screen because of the IPS technology we should still be able to see colors represented just like we're looking at it head-on. But actually this is a regular T 
in panel. It's not IPS. I say that because as we tilt the screen, you can see how the colors do pretty quickly fade out, just like on uh, slightly older displays from yesteryear, where if we look at it from kind of a top-down angle, you can see that the colors should still be preserved as opposed to becoming kind of blackened out. So this is, in fact, um, not a IPS display. It's a slightly cheaper regular TN display. Again, for the price, it's already a great phone. I just don't understand why track phone has to directly lie and give us a statement that's basically 100% false. It's not fully laminated, it's not HD, and it's not IPS. So moving past that slightly disappointing ad print, uh, we can take a closer look now at the performance of the phone. And as a whole, I would say it's decent for an entry-level device. It is a very stock phone, so uh, luckily that means TCL hasn't really installed their custom software on top of Android 8.1, so we do have the traditional drawer here to swipe up, just like a Android 1 device would. Track down notification shade also gives us access to quick shortcuts. In terms of software, we have all the regular Google apps installed by default, including access to YouTube, there is a Gmail, Chrome, so on and so forth. But there's also a handful of uh, some bloatware from TrackPhone, uh, as well as a handful of trial games like Coin Master, Solitaire. Um, there's also Crosswords, Idle City, Idle Farm. All of these are installed by default from TrackPhone and TCL. Now if we take a look at the camera performance first, we can double tap here to launch into the camera. It's not as basic as you'd think. There is actually access to HDR and 8 megapixels for the camera uh, resolution is actually quite good for the price. Again, compared to say the um, Samsung Galaxy A10e, which is a phone that sells for more than twice the price, it also has an 8 megapixel sensor. The neat trick that TCL designed is you can swipe from any edge, the top or the bottom, to bring up a kind of virtual slider area, very similar to Nokia's Lumia phones in the past, that gives you a carousel view that are easier to click using just one hand. Additional settings include a panoramic mode, there's also a light trace mode, and under advanced settings you can further change things like EIS for the HD quality videos that you can capture, and things like that. Overall quality is actually pretty decent, as long as you hold still and there's plenty of light around you. Again, there isn't optical image stabilization, but for a budget phone, I would say the camera quality is above average. Now some competitors that come to mind uh, in the same kind of budget territory would be the Xiaomi Redmi 7a. Very similar specs at 2 gigabytes of RAM, but uh, the Xiaomi does sell for $89, which is of course already considered a cheap phone, but again at 20 bucks it just proves that the TCL LX is a really exceptional value. Some other samples here, again you do have to be patient because sometimes it takes a split second for the images to be taken. Again, the processor isn't the fastest thing in the world, so uh, just make sure you wait a split second longer for it to take the image and kind of don't shake during that process. But uh, afterwards, again, colors themselves are represented, I would say, fairly well uh, for the price. The lock screen of the LX has also been customized by TCL, where we see some quick launch shortcuts that we can jump into just by double tapping or dragging up uh, from the bottom of the display. So things like doing a quick Google search, dialer, pad, messenger, camera can all be accessed. Now as a budget phone, of course, we don't have any biometrics on this device, so there is no fingerprint scanner, although you can always use a pattern or a password uh, instead. Now if we do a quick demo of video playback, let's try to jump into YouTube. One of the best attributes of this phone is going to be its Wi-Fi reception strength. Just because it is made entirely out of plastic, it seems like we're always able to get nearly full bars of reception, even though the router is actually quite far away from this room right now. Uh, the Wi-Fi strength is actually a little bit stronger even than the Samsung Galaxy A10e. So let's play back some sound and try out the speaker here. to have access to all the goodies with Android 8.1, including split-screen multitasking.
such as going into, say, a Google search here, and you can see that both apps are running. It is going to be slightly sluggish at first, just because, again, the RAM is a little on the low side. Same thing goes with the processor, but you are able to multitask uh, on this device uh, thanks to the use of Android 8.1 as the OS. And um, again, with this taller aspect ratio, it does indeed work if you want to access that feature. Uh, we do also have access to picture-in-picture -picture mode, by the way. So that means if we go back into the home screen, the music or the video still plays back as a floating image in the background. And that's part of uh, a feature that all Android Oreo phones and above support. So if we jump into Chrome, for instance, let's see how long it takes to load back a complex page like The Verge. So obviously it's not lightning fast or instantaneous, but it's actually decent speed and everything is still, again, fairly readable. Let's try loading back Amazon. Here's the full desktop version of the site. So indeed, it's still loading along. A few years ago, phones for 20 bucks were uh, you know, either dumb phones or devices with super outdated processors that couldn't even load a web page without giving us checkerboards. But now we can see actually a surprisingly usable experience. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as fluid as the latest flagships, but we are talking about a huge price difference here. We do have a handful of uh, kind of apps open in the background. It still is opened up, as you can see there, if we're jumping back. So the two gigabytes of RAM is actually being used fairly effectively by the system, which is nice to see. But there are a handful of unique wallpapers that TCL has built on in, which we can take a quick look at here. Um, so some by TrackPhone and then some from TCL that you can kind of cycle through and obviously download more if you don't like the numbers that you see here. The last thing that we can take a look at would be probably gaming performance and some of the pre-installed apps are a good kind of demo of that. Uh, overall, I would say for light gaming, it does work all right, but don't really you know, use this for extensive gaming such as PUBG or Asphalt 9. On those types of uh, games, it will be you know very sluggish and frame rates are going to be quite low just because we are talking about pretty much the most entry-level configuration in terms of the processor on here from MediaTek. Uh, but overall, again, it's functional. Just be a bit more patient in terms of loading things back once they are open, again, for relatively simple titles, especially for puzzle-type games, strategy games. Um, it does still work. Crossy Road, it will be still functional. And again, for simpler games and titles, it actually does all right. Um, and again, it's still a pretty enjoyable experience thanks to a relatively immersive and large screen. As a secondary phone, as a backup phone for kids or the elderly, it's more than acceptable. And uh, there are, again, some occasional moments of sluggishness or hesitation here and there, drop frames, but uh, it's not going to kill you from using the device, which, again, for the price, is already a success. So you can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. That's been the extremely affordable TCL LX, a $20 Android smartphone with a modern 2x1 aspect ratio display.